What do you think about waste management in the town and what comes to mind? I, uh, I don't live in the town, uh, but I've spent a lot of time <laughs> working in the town. Uh, one, and, and some time ago, uh, back when I was working for the development corporation, we want, we, like a lot of project-based stuff happens in one spot. So, so you do something in this part of town and the people down here are annoyed. So we were always trying to find things that we could do that impacted on everything. So one year we decided that we would, we would install garbage cans throughout the, the downtown area. We made them ourselves. Uh, Hugh Eman was the uh, guy that did it. We designed them ourselves, and we uh, had, uh, and, and we're going through this. I was doing an analysis on, on what it would cost if we used plastic bags, <laughs> and it was horrendous. <laughs> Uh, and so what we did is uh, W.B. Bailey's was an operation then and they were like a tinsmith. They did galvanized stuff. So all the garbage cans that we built, and they were big and ugly, but they were, they were big, all made of two inch lumber. And they had a sleeve in them that, that uh, they had a lid that kept, tipped over with a held in place of the chain and they had a, a galvanized sleeve that would come out which you could dump and you just put back in. And it had a hole in the bottom so when it rained it kind of cleaned it a little bit. So that was that was one of the things that we did, uh, and they were they were filled, and we talked the town into emptying them. That saved us. That was five. a big plus right there, wasn't it? <laughs> that was that was a very nasty yeah. trick I played on Charlie Jess and Henry Brissett. But great, anyway, they yeah. they wouldn't agree to any other thing I wanted that day. But they, I said, well, could you do that? Oh yeah, we could do that. So that's it. Well, I knew it was going to cost us five thousand dollars to sure. have a truck go through once a week. Yeah. Anyway, they did it, and. Uh, then eventually they were the Yarmouth Development Corporation under Dave Whiting, replaced them with what's there currently. Yeah. And I know I hired Mark that, that yes. picks up all the garbage. And he, uh, he goes through, I don't know, I'd like to know how much I spend on plastic bags. And then, it's, then we've got this plastic bag, another yeah. one. Another plastic bag. Well, another 50 or whatever there are. Anyway, so that's uh, just one comment. I, uh, I, I've worked in the town, I volunteer in the town. I live as well, so I'm not a town. Um, but I'm generally very pleased with the uh, recycling and waste management practices that we've adopted uh, with our role of waste check place and so forth. Um, at least it's working on the surface. I know there's always challenges with finding <laughs> places to, to sell your goods. Um, same with compost. And <coughs> Scott, you can reflect on the compost issue and the challenges with that, I guess. But but it's encouraging to see us continuing to try to make improvements in our waste stream management, in my opinion. Um, it would be nice if we could start working on some of the details, such as single-use plastic bags, um, to see the town really putting teeth into that and saying, in my opinion, no, we're not going to be using these anymore. We've got right now some of the big chain retailers who are not using them or who are providing them at a cost. Um, some of them that are um, giving discounts to people who bring their own bags and some that are doing nothing. Um, I think if they were eliminated and put everybody in the same uh, level playing field, that might be an improvement in the way things are. I know they have to be used for some specialty shops and so forth perhaps, but for the vast majority of people, I think the single-use plastic bags could be eliminated with very little challenge. It's a matter of getting used to taking your own bag to the store and reusing it. I know I've heard concrete complaints and challenges from some people who say, oh yes, but you know, if you carry meat in one and it gets transferred to your uh, vegetables, you could get, you know, very ill and die from it and so forth. But it's a matter of making sure that you take good care of your bags. You can wash out cotton bags and you can uh, use recycled fibers, uh, old jean legs chopped off and sewed up and put straps on and make great to carry home bags and so forth. So, so there's lots of options out there and there's good opportunities for business. I mean, I can see somebody getting into, into the product of taking recycled garments and turning them into, you know, carry home shopping mm -hmm. bags. There's a good project for somebody in Yarmouth to take on, um, to, to make profit on. Uh, and it's not a new idea. They've done it in other areas. Uh, and more and more cities and uh, provinces are starting to put bans on, on single-use plastic bags. Um, the other thing is the amount of plastic that we have in our waste stream right now, uh, it seems to me that it's getting bigger rather than smaller. Not always something that's doable, I guess, from the town's point of view, but if you can get municipalities to get together to work on those kinds of issues, there's solutions that are available. And once 
again, there are certainly uh, uh, provinces that have been able to reduce plastic packaging successfully, and um, it's for the good of all, I think, in that sort of thing happens. The other thing is, with the marine environment we have around here, something as simple as a plastic drinking straw becomes a very mm -hmm. major issue. Um, it's one of the things that the Maryland Environmental Think Tank is working on right now, is trying to educate people on the use of something as simple as a plastic drinking straw. We don't think anything of it. Every time you go to a restaurant, you get a drinking straw with you. Almost every time you get a drinking straw with your drinks. And uh, a lot of those make their way into the ocean and they create major, major issues. Uh, so little things like that can make a big, a big difference. Uh, and if we can eliminate some of those things, we used to use wax paper ones when I was a kid, they worked fine. But the plastic industry, petrochemical industry is very powerful and you know they introduce a product and give it to you at a great discount once you're when, once you're sold on the product um, and the old one dies you get the corner on the market so everybody's going to use plastic and that's pretty much what's happened I think in this case uh, if we look back at paper drinking straws it would be a whole lot better better yet none at all so anyway um, I think the single use plastic yes the these new K-cups that are coming out, is, oh, gee, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, I don't, again, you, they started a market that I don't think can stop anymore. It, it's, uh, do you so, think the general public um, is aware of how to do the proper recycling? Do you think that, that we've done well, good that, outreach? That's, in that's something I was thinking about before I came in. I should have made some notes because I don't remember much, but I, I think that that uh, uh, two points. Uh, one is that whenever I'm puzzled, I phone waste check, and I've never stumped them yet. Okay, okay. that's good. It's that's like good. it's like every time I call, I've got this. What do I do? They always have an answer. The only time I didn't like their answer is when they told me styrofoam insulation went in the landfill. Anyway, I found somebody to give it to. I had enough like to do a doghouse or something, mm -hmm. and I didn't want it anymore. And, mm -hmm. and it was nice blue two inch. Anyway, uh, yes, the, yeah. <laughs> the other the other thing is that is that the information is available and it probably should be circulated on a regular basis so, somehow. Either like people get flyers, people get the Vanguard, people uh, uh, just to keep reminding people, you know. Of, you know. I, I really think you really have to get the kids up and much the same, my wife is a school teacher and it's the last thing we want to put on the schools, but uh, adults don't get it. Even the Delts that do get it, a lot of them aren't going to do what's asked of them. I like the idea, even in Lake Annis last year, mm -hmm. they came by and they were doing checks on the green bins and oh. putting in people's garbage bags wow. and so forth. Yeah. I was impressed to see that. I mean, we had, we had, had a summer, summer student. Summer student. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The young and lady we had people. hired uh, for yeah. TRIPA for the summer, mm -hmm. she went with a staff person from Waste yeah. Check and they, they inspected the green carts and ticketed people. Yeah. They but that's a little but, nice note. And some, I don't know what the ticket. Some education is. information. Exactly, and and that's it, it's important in two respects. So it's important in that okay, so you've identified someone, you've given them a warning, and oh, there's an opportunity for them to either learn, mm -hmm. or if you go back and find the same thing a second time, then you know that it's yeah, not it's education that's fine. the issue. So then it's time for a fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Right now. Uh, there was a huge meeting in Alberta, um, which I wasn't able to go to, uh, that the Composting Council is trying to, Composting Council of Canada is trying to set up standards, like an ISO standard, that, uh, uh, that a not all compostable plastics is actual compostable. So in order for you to get this standard, let's put, like, we just talked about blue bags. Okay, let's put a certain color green or, or whatever, but in order for you to get that color and stamp, you need that, you need to make sure that it's made out of cellulose or sugar-based yeah, uh, yeah. In, in, instead of, uh, uh, it's big. Uh, and I don't know how they're gonna stop some of it. Like, I really don't. Are there, have you heard of companies where they have a pollution tax on a business? No. Pollution tax, no. But one one of the more popular things that's happening, of course, it adds cost, but is to make sure that those resources, so so the manufacturer of the resource or the person that's retailing the product, has to take it back when it's finished its life cycle, or has to be responsible for that packaging, whether that 
it's in the form of a tax or a deposit or whatever. Um, it's, it's, it seems to be a big issue in the discussion there in Cal to Nova Scotia. So we have discussions on that now um, so that you've got um, products that are being manufactured um, that you don't want to end up either in the ditch or in the compost, I should say the house in the, in the garbage. It becomes responsible if you have manufactured that product to make sure that either it gets recycled in a responsible manner or they turn it into something else when it comes back. Mm -hmm. That could be simply a matter of having it remanufactured back into the same thing it was made into before. So mm -hmm. something like that. Need provincial support though. In a perfect example oh, with yeah. me is uh, uh, you don't see plastic pop bottles on PEI. Right. Yeah. Right. Very strict. They're You're trying to get them going again though. Aren't right. They? It's all glass. <laughs> it's all glass. Right. Um, so if they can do it, why can't we do certain things different than what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, if a, if a whole island can say no plastic bottles on the island where we yeah. want all recyclable, well, okay, it could be the same thing with the with the uh, plastic bags. I think the manufacturers should be forced. Uh, Eighty percent uh, need to be. 80% recyclable material made in them or whatever and then they, they would at least be buying back or, or they'd have to recover some of their output back into their system mm -hmm. and, and that needs to be done provincially which I believe it can. Do you see any innovation that, um, that we could think of or apply that maybe another community hasn't adopted? Or that you don't know of? Is there something really innovative that we could do to change, to help to change the culture, have a little bit of education, but at the end of the day, make sure things are sorted or re reduce the amount of things that people are buying that causes pollution to begin with? No packaging. I, I think the, we we're talking about the literature, and I appreciate Scott saying you always send out stuff. Yeah. yeah. I just wonder about a decal right on top of the red green card. Oh, it's there work. all the time. Oh, is it? No, no, I'm just saying like a... Yeah. A decal to identify... Just what saying, this is what goes in here. Oh. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Well, it's simple to implement, but it's just pause for thought, you know. Would you say that um, solid waste management is a major issue currently affecting the natural envi environment in our area? Drugstore. 100% yes, that's all I wear. 100% yes, I'd say. I, I think it's one of the biggest environmental issues that we have going, and that there is still a significant segment of our population that either um, doesn't get it or doesn't care. I'm not sure which of that may be, or maybe, I guess both, a little bit of both. Um, and, and the hard part to me, like I said, is when you live in a close to a marine environment, and we, every one of us relies on the money that's being earned in the fishing sector, put bread and butter on our table, uh, there's, we've got to do a better job if we want to see our children and our grandchildren still fishing and being involved here with, uh, with the fishing industry because uh, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a significant problem as, as things continue when you look at the volume of plastic, particularly that you know, when you catch a, a large fish now or a whale or, or aquatic birds birds is a really good one. Uh, when I don't know if you've ever seen one dead on the beach or not, but quite often when they're, they're dead on the beach and they're, the, the, the remnants of them, you know, you, you look through their rib cage and all you see is you know rubber bands and plastic mm -hmm. tabs and that sort of thing that, that's been in their Fantastic. stomach. It's it's surprising just how much plastic is out there and, and, and what they're picking up and like you say ingesting. And um, I think we can do a better job. 